Hi, this is Andy Melton from andymelton.net. Hopefully you are coming to this post from my previous blog post where I talk about the Raspberry Pi, the potential uses for it, things that you will need to uh, purchase to get started using it, and additional resources. So hopefully you have your Raspberry Pi ready to go, ready to set up. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to need to do is get your micro SD card set up with the Raspbian off the excuse me the Raspbian operating system. Uh, there are other operating systems out there, but uh, for the purposes of my demonstration, I am going to show you how to load the Raspbian operating system. So let's get started. I'm going to take the micro SD card out of its protective case here. This is always the fun part. these things. And I'm going to take the adapter and the micro SD card, put the micro SD card into the adapter. And I'm going to put this into my computer and then I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you the next steps that you need to take to get the Raspbian operating system loaded onto that micro SD card. Okay, so now that we've got the micro SD card into the computer, uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually go out to a website and download a program called Etcher and it is available at etcher.io and I want to download the Windows 64-bit version uh, download the version that you need depending on whichever version of Windows you are running and they've also got versions for Mac OS and Linux as well alright so the etcher setup file has downloaded so I am going to run the setup program now. Okay, so Etcher has installed and it has opened up. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go out to the Raspberry Pi website and download Raspbian. And click on the download links at the top. So as you can see there are a couple of options here. Um, you can download the noobs, noobs option uh, which once it's flashed onto the card when you start up the Pi it will give you several options for which operating system that you want to load. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to show you how to load uh, Raspbian onto the micro SD card. Uh, but if you're curious there are other options down at the bottom as well uh, for Ubuntu and the Windows 10 IoT Core uh, this one is not a tr uh, traditional Windows um, operating system like you think of. It doesn't have a desktop like uh, the regular Windows installation does. So we're going to go back up here and we're going to download Raspbian. And I am going to download the zip file. If you have a torrent client installed, it's good for uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation if you use the torrent option because it doesn't use their uh, bandwidth as much. So as you can see it's a pretty large file. It's a 1.6 gigabyte file. So I am going to pause the video here and let that download. 
while I'm still waiting on the uh, Raspbian stretch with desktop to download, I wanted to point out another option that is on this page. Uh, there's a Raspbian stretch light version. Uh, this one does not contain a desktop, um, but it is a good option if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W and you just want to use it as a um, headless server type of uh, setup. So Raspbian finished downloading, but I actually stopped it during the middle of the download and switched to downloading the torrent. Uh, it looked like the zip file was going to take much longer to download, and oftentimes I have better luck with the torrent because more people are sharing the file, and so it downloads much quicker that way. All right, so let's go to Etcher again, and we're going to select the image from our downloads folder. And I'm going to click on the zip file and click open and make sure that it's got the right card. So that is it. And I wanted to check on this because it will erase everything on the card. So just make sure you have the right card selected. When you're ready, click on flash. And then if you're in Windows, you're going to get a, a UAC prompt to allow the changes to take place. Okay, so now it is flashing the card, and as you can see, it will take a few minutes for it to flash, and we'll be back when it finishes. Okay, so the Etcher program has flashed the Raspbian operating system image onto the micro SD card, and now it is going back through and validating uh, that it is there uh, successfully. Okay, so Etcher has finished validating that the image was successfully flashed to the micro SD card and it released the card and my, uh, Windows reloaded it. And so you're getting this error message here and that's because the micro SD card now has a, a Linux file system on it and Windows cannot read that natively. So just hit OK and don't click on format disk just hit cancel here and you can see it says flash complete so we're ready to close this program and take, um, make sure that you safely eject the micro sd card and now we're ready to load it into our raspberry pi and get it set up I thought what would be fun would be to come downstairs and connect the Raspberry Pi to the television and show you how to uh, get everything assembled down here. So first I've got the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and I've got the case for it here and I'm missing a piece and it's right here. So then I'm going to take the Pi 3 out of the box. And I am going to line this up. Putting that there, I believe. Yep. So you want to put the where the SD card goes, you want to put it on this end falls into place and then you want to take this piece and you will put it over the ports on the back and snap it in and then you will take the side pieces of uh, this one goes on this side 
and then this piece goes over the ports. And then uh, the top piece goes on top, like so. Okay, so now we need a couple of other pieces of hardware. We need a mouse and a keyboard, which I've got right here. And again, I'm using the PS2 mouse and keyboard with the PS2 to USB adapter. So I'm gonna take, this is the USB on the go cable, which we'll have to use for the Pi Zeros. Uh, but I'm gonna plug in the, actually I need to plug in the mouse into the adapter. I can remember which direction it goes and hopefully not twist the pins. All right, so I'm going to plug in the USB PS2 to USB adapter into the one of the USB ports on the Pi and throw everything off the entertainment center here. And then I'm going to plug in the HDMI cable into the HDMI port. And then I'm going to connect a power cable. And then I am going to take our micro SD card and I'm going to put it into the slot. So let me get this arranged a little bit more neatly here. And hopefully I have the television on the right input. Okay, and now I am going to uh, turn on the Pi uh, with the button that I showed you in the previous video that this uh, power adapter has. And like I said, hopefully I put it on to the uh, correct input. Okay, so there's a red light on the back of the Pi, and it does look like I put it into uh, the correct input. So now you get a message that says resize root file system, and it's restarting. You get this pretty rainbow for raspberries. And welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. And now you're at the desktop. I just showed you how to set up the Raspberry Pi 3. Now I want to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, first I want to show you how to use the uh, Adafruit case, how to put the Raspberry Pi Zero into that case. Uh, and you'll have to forgive me, I always have, I always struggle with this one a little bit. So you want to align, there's uh, poles that you push the Pi down on and then push this down and then take this piece and you push it over that one. Okay, so that one's really easy too. I do personally think that the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundations case is a little bit easier and actually I like the looks of it a little bit e more as well. Uh, but you take the Raspberry Pi Foundations case and you open it up and then you take the I.O. portion, put it over there, push it down onto the poles until it snaps then we take the uh, top part, put it down there. So now, to get this one powered on, 
Uh, what we need to do is I'm going to first take the USB on the Go cable and I'm going to put it into the USB port and then I am going to uh, plug in our mouse and keyboard and then I am going to plug in the mini HDMI cable and then I am going to plug in the power. I apologize for always getting the cable backwards. Okay, so now we've got the keyboard and mouse connected. We've got power connected. Uh, one thing that we are missing is the micro SD card, which I failed to remove from the Pi 3. And um, looks like I'm going to have to disconnect it because I forgot to take it out and put it in first. So this is good to show you how to get it out. I usually just carefully press on that bottom part there and then put the micro SD card in. And then line it back up. Make sure this is pushed in all the way. Okay, make sure it snaps. Okay, and now we reconnect everything. So again, because the Raspberry Pi Zero only has one USB port, we're using the USB on the Go cable to connect our keyboard and mouse. And if you had a wireless mouse and keyboard, just plug in your um, dongle into that part. So then I want to put in some power. And then we're going to put in the display, HDMI, mini HDMI. And then I am going to grab the television remote because I know I don't have it on the right input. Alright, so now I'm going to turn the Raspberry Pi Zero on. And again, you get the rainbow colors. and we're slowly loading the desktop. Now keep in mind that uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, definitely doesn't have as much horsepower behind it as the Raspberry Pi 3 does. So things are definitely going to be much slower if you use the desktop version of Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and end this portion of the video and I'm gonna run back upstairs and we're going to uh, start configuring uh, the Raspbian desktop. Okay, so I apologize, there is one part of this that I forgot. Um, if you're using the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero, the one that does not have wireless built in, you're going to want to make sure that you have a USB hub. So to connect that version, what we will do is we will take the USB on the Go cable and we will connect it to the Pi Zero 
and watch Andy never remember which way to put the USB cable. So then we're going to take the USB hub, uh, the USB cable that comes off of it, and plug it into uh, the USB on the go cable. So then we would plug in and throw everything off the table. <laughs> so then we would plug in the ma uh, USB mouse and keyboard into the hub. And then we would connect the power. And it was already turned on. <laughs> And then we would connect uh, the HDMI cable, which also fell to the floor. And then you would take your uh, Wi-Fi adapter. I just happen to have a TP-Link USB Wi-Fi adapter. And you would connect it into uh, the USB hub. Uh, this is a non powered, or this is a hub that can be used powered or non-powered, um, I do recommend that you plug in the AC adapter when, uh, whenever you can. So then you would just turn on the Pi and let it start up as normal. As you can see, I'm back upstairs in my office. So now what I want to do is I want to show you some of the configuration tasks that I normally do after I first set up a Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the external capture device and I'm going to turn the Raspberry Pi on. And actually that image was from when I had it on earlier. So now as you can see it's starting up. And one thing I didn't mention in the previous videos was the number of raspberries at the top there. That indicates the core numbers. So on this one you can see there are four cores. Um, if you noticed on the Raspberry Pi Zero there was only one. And um, actually I think I'm going to have to turn it off again because I had a USB device attached and it was trying to boot from that. So let me restart it again. All right, so again, we're starting it up. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Okay, so now we have a desktop. So the, there's a couple of things that I always do. One thing I always have an issue with whenever I'm using a wireless mouse is I have an issue with the cursor whenever I move it across the desktop. Uh, there's always an issue with it having a, a lot of latency. Uh, so I have to correct that by uh, going into the command line. And I know I'm throwing the command line at you first thing, but uh, that's usually the first thing that I do, um, so bear with me. Uh, this mouse that I'm using, this PS2 USB mouse, doesn't seem to be having that problem, so I won't actually implement uh, the fix here. I just want to show you where it's at if you run across that problem. Uh, so what we will do is um, go into the command line file. And so the command that I'm typing in here is sudo, S-U-D-O, which commands for um, super user do. Um, it's also referred to as the sudoer uh, command. And I'm telling it to open a program called nano. And then I'm telling it to open a file that's located at slash boot slash uh, commandline.txt. Commandline.txt is the actual file name. Okay, so I just went into that file and now I am going to go to the 
end of the line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add USB HID dot mouse pull equals zero. And if you run into an issue with it still being slow, try to increase that uh, zero to a one. So then after you make that change, you would simply do a control X and you would type Y to save that change. Um, like I said, I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to say no. And then after you save it, you would say sudo reboot uh, to reboot the Pi. So the next thing that I will tell you how to do is to correct where the Raspberry Pi is not utilizing the full display. So if you'll notice in this video, the uh, taskbar at the top and the wallpaper, they don't actually reach all the way to the edge of the, the video, uh, which it's not on my end, it's not reaching all the way up to the top of the monitor and the sides and bottom either. So to correct that, we need to correct the overscan setting. And again, we're going to go back, we're going to use the command line. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go back to, I'm going to do sudo nano. This time I'm going to open up a file in the boot folder called config.txt. And then I'm going to look for a line that says disable overscan. So it's right here. Um, it says disable underscore overscan equals one. And I'm just going to take out this hashtag or pound sign, depending on which generation you're in. And then I'm going to do control X. I'm going to save this. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to say sudo reboot. So now the Raspberry Pi is going to reboot and when it comes back up we should have a display that is full sized. Okay, much better. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do uh, with our Pi is we want to get some network access. Uh, the quickest way to get network access is by plugging in an Ethernet cable, but uh, most people these days use Wi-Fi. So what you will do is come up over here to the uh, top right, right, click on it. And actually, so you'll right click on it and then click on wireless and wired, wired network settings. And then you're going to say configure the interface and you're going to say WLAN for wireless LAN. And then leave this option here selected and want to apply. Okay, so now that you've done that, you can come up here to the, um, click on this button again, and then we can select a network. And I'm gonna select my uh, network, and then I need to enter the password. All right, and it should be connecting to the network now. Let me take it a couple of minutes. Okay, so it looks like it's connected. So now let's see if we actually have network access. And I want to open the web browser, which is actually Chromium, which is an open source version of Google Chrome. Let's 
I'll close a couple of these tabs that get automatically opened. And then I'm going to search, just search for something at random here. I'm just going to search for Raspberry Pi. And the default search engine that it uses is DuckDuckGo. Can change that in the settings. And it most certainly looks like we have internet access. We're getting out to the search results. And we are slowly but surely loading the Raspberry Pi website. Okay, so perfect. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to access the configuration menu. And so if you come up here to the Pi button and then come down to Preferences and Raspberry Pi Configuration, there's a whole lot of options in here that you can configure. Um, if you so desire, I highly recommend that you change the default password and you change the default host name. So I'm going to go ahead and change mine. Okay. Password has been changed. And then I'm also going to change the name of the uh, the default host name. Uh, this is the name that is broadcast on your network. Uh, I'm just going to change this one to uh, RazPi02 uh, for the time being. And then you've got the option here of booting to the desktop, which is this graphical environment, or you can boot to the command line. And then you've also got the option here to uh, perform an auto login. If you don't want it to do an auto login, if you want it to prompt you for uh, which user account to log into, remove this check mark. And then if you want it to make sure that there's an available network connection when it starts up, uh, select this option. If you want to take that splash screen off, you can disable it. Uh, you can set the resolution of your display here. And you can do underscan and oh, you can turn the underscan on or off. And then you've got options for the interfaces. So in the some of the previous videos, I showed you the camera port. Uh, this is where you would enable that. And then if you want to enable uh, SSH access into your Raspberry Pi so that you can access it uh, via an SSH session from another computer on your network, uh, this is where you would enable that. Uh, same for a virtual network connection, uh, which would allow you to um, connect into this desktop. And actually, I can show you let me get switched over to my uh, computer desktop. So as you can see here, I've, I'm connected in the VNC viewer to my kitchen pie that's downstairs. And I'm actually running an update on it uh, at the moment. But that's what the VNC connection would allow you to do. Okay, switching back over to the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are some other options in here that um, I'll be honest with you, I don't really use. I don't use the SPI, the I2C serial one wire, and the remote GPIO. Um, if you get involved in a lot of the other projects that are out on the internet, you most certainly probably will be using these, especially the remote GPIO, if you're doing some actual physical um, projects with the Pi. 
So then moving over to the performance tab, you can change the GPU memory. Uh, this is the dedicated video memory. Uh, the Raspberry Pi only has one gigabyte, so you want to uh, use increase this sparingly. I do typically increase this to 128 megabytes. Um, then switching over to the localization tab, uh, you can set the locale, the time zone, a keyboard, and your Wi-Fi country if you so desire. So those are just a few of the options. Actually, that's all of the options in the Raspberry Pi configuration menu. Uh, there are some other options that you can do, uh, but to get to those, you need to get to the command line again. So I'm going to come up here and open up the terminal. And I'm going to type in the command sudo raspi hyphen config. And then I'm going to press enter. Actually, I'm going to see if I can make this a little bigger. I don't know that that makes much of a difference. I'll just leave it this way. Uh, press enter. So now I've got the option in here as well to change the user password, set the host name, and configure the boot options, etc. Uh, what I'm going to do in here that I can't do from that other menu is I'm going to go into the advanced options. And I am going to expand the file system. Uh, what this will do is so what this will do is expand the SD card uh, so that you have all the access to the full size of that SD card. Uh, what will happen is whenever you put the Raspberry Pi image onto the SD card, uh, typically it's going to be a four gigabyte image. So you're only going to have a four gigabyte drive essentially. So by doing this, uh, the next time you reboot, you'll have the full size of your SD card. In this case, I believe it's a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. So then we're going to get out of this menu. And I'm not going to reboot it right now because we've already done that earlier. I will reboot it later. Uh, from the desktop, a few things that you may want to do, um, you can right click on the desktop and go to desktop preferences. And then of course you can change the uh, picture background, you can set the colors, you can add the documents folder and the mounted disks. Uh, that way if you insert a USB drive, it'll appear on the desktop. Uh, you can make changes to the menu bar if you want it to be small, if you want to move it to the bottom, you can change the color of it. And then you can change the fonts as well. Okay, so moving on, just going to cancel out of that for now. So another thing that you may want to do is if you've got multiple people in your uh, home or office that may want to use the Raspberry Pi, you might want to add their own account so that they can have their own settings. To do that, you would open up the command line again and you would simply type in add user, or I'm sorry, actually you would do sudo again, add user, um, in this case, since I don't have um, my own account on here, I'm just going to type my name and I'm press enter. And then it's going to ask for a password. And you won't actually see stars or anything. It's just going to uh, stay the same. Press enter. And then it's going to ask you for a little bit more information that you don't have to put in, but I will put my name in, leave that alone out. 
Yes, the information is correct. Okay, so that's taken care of. And so what I would do at this point, since I've added another user, is I would come back up here to this Raspberry Pi can, or menu option, go into Preferences, and then go into the Raspberry Pi configuration. And then I would set the um, auto login and remove this checkbox. And then from there, let's do a sudo reboot. And now we get the option to log in. And you can select either the default Pi account and log in, or you can we can go into uh, my account. Um, I'm going to go back into the Pi account because it's the default account, which already has uh, super user permissions. It has the permissions to um, do the sudo command from the command line. And actually, I should have remembered that I did change the default password. Okay, so now we're logging in. So as I just stated, my the account that I just created doesn't have permission uh, to perform that sudo command. But if we want to grant anyone permission to do that, uh, what we would do is go back into the command prompt and then we would type the command uh, sudo visudo and then we're going to go down to the user privilege specification And then we will add Andy, and we'll do all equals all, all, all. And then we'll do a control X and a Y to save that and press enter. And then what we should be able to do is log out. switch to my account and then one way that we can test this is let's do sudo apt git install uh, what's a good program to install? Let's do something simple like FileZilla. Okay, I'm just going to ask for my password again. And then it's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to take up 32 megabytes of additional disk space and it will download and install the program. Uh, while that does that, uh, another thing that I want to show you is um, er in earlier videos I mentioned, you know, if something went wrong with the installation, you could easily restore uh, the SD card. Uh, one thing that you can do, instead of having to start over from scratch, uh, let me plug in a USB drive real quick. Uh, the USB drive that I'm plugging in has another micro SD card in it that's the same size as the micro SD card that is in the Raspberry Pi that I'm booting from. Uh, once you do that, uh, you can come up here to the Raspberry Pi menu and then come over down to Accessories and then click on SD card copier. 
and then enter your password. Make sure you turn NumLock on. And then you're going to copy it from the boot device, which in this case is going to be this one here. And actually, I misspoke. It may just be a 32 gigabyte one. And then you're going to copy it to the mass storage device. And then you would just click on Start. And then it's going to make sure that you're sure with it erasing everything on the mass storage device. And for now, I'm just going to cancel out of that. There is a lot of applications that are already installed. Uh, one of those is an Office suite that is actually compatible with uh, Microsoft Office files. And you'll find that in the Raspberry Pi menu. If you come down to Office, uh, there's a word processor, there's a spreadsheet tool, and then Actually, this is not the spreadsheet tool. Uh, this is similar to PowerPoint. Uh, there's a draw drawing file, and then there's a spreadsheet program, and then a database program. And I'll go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer, which is the word processor. And usually initial launches take the longest. And I mean, it's a very fully featured word processor. For many years, I used um, OpenOffice, uh, which LibreOffice is a fork of. And I found that I could get almost everything I needed to done. Uh, I will say the only problem I ever had with it was whenever I needed to send off a document in the .doc format. Um, it would save it in the .doc doc format uh, or doc x format uh, but whenever you opened it up on the other end it didn't look quite the same so just keep that in mind um, if you're going to be sending the document out I would recommend using the convert to PDF option uh, that's available here So then you've got some options for programming, which, you know, as I stated earlier, this uh, the whole pie was designed to get kids involved in uh, coding. So it's got a lot of that stuff already on here. And I showed you the office programs, and then there are a few internet programs, and you'll see the uh, FileZilla FTP client that I installed just a couple of minutes ago is available. And then um, I talked about it earlier, the Magpie ma magazine in my previous blog post about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are a few games, a couple of games already included. And then there's just a few standard tools, uh, text editors and uh, a program to archive files, sort of like a, a WinZip program, some help files, uh, preferences. And if you want to add or remove software, there's a ton of software that you can add. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to look for some games for your kids. Uh, there's a ton of them in here. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge gamer, so I really haven't installed a lot of these myself. Uh, so I don't know how good they are, to be honest with you. Uh, so really, it's just going to be kind of a trial and error type of thing. Uh, so what I'll do is I will just grab, I'll just grab one of these. Click on the check mark, checkbox. Um, sometimes it'll tell you that additional applications are required to install this one. Um, if that happens, just click on OK, and then click on Apply. And it's going to prompt me for credentials. And I'm going to enter the credentials for the Pi account. Okay. 
and it's prompting for the it didn't give me the option to enter mine I believe because I don't think we uh, restarted it since I added uh, myself to the sudoers file Okay, so it's installed the program and typically it will put it under the games menu. Uh, so I'm just going to open this. I have no clue what to expect. Oh wow, that's pretty darn quick. <laughs> I thought I was pretty good at Tetris, but this this one is making me think that I'm not. And actually now I realize that I don't think I have any control. It's playing itself. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. Okay, so just go through here and if there's something that uh, looks interesting to you, I just click on the checkbox and hit apply. And it should then be under the applicable menu here. Uh, there are different graphics programs, internet programs, different multimedia programs. There's a lot in here. Um, it's just going to be some trial and error until you find ones that work really well for you. And I apologize, I think the capture device uh, kind of glitched and stopped recording for a moment there, so hopefully uh, you didn't miss too much. I guess I will find out when I start to put the video together. Um, another thing that I want to do is I want to open Google Chrome. I'm not. I'm sorry, it's not Google Chrome, it's Chromium. And I want to open the apps. And I'm going to sign in with my account. And I'm going to stop this for just a moment and get logged in. Okay, so I got signed into one of my Google accounts. If you happen to see the address on the screen, uh, don't email that account because I never check it. I'm no longer using uh, the techbutter.com domain. Um, I am, it's just redirecting to andymelton.net. So I'm going into the Chrome Web Store. So I'm going to go into Office Online. And then I'm going to add it to Chrome. I'm going to add the extension. And then there's an option for Word Online, so I'm going to add that one as well. Add app. And then add Excel, PowerPoint. Okay, so now we've got the options in the app section here, so we can open up the Word Online. And then you have to sign in. And then once you get signed in, you get to some familiar screens. Uh, get a what's new, I'm gonna just hit got it. And then you can do a new blank document. And then you've got your usual Microsoft Word in front of you.
and it's definitely not as fast as having Microsoft Word locally installed uh, but then you've also got PowerPoint and Excel uh, one thing that I do like to do is come over here to this uh, three button menu option uh, come down to more tools and click on the option for add to desktop and then and actually what I should have done is I should have came over here and done it from this page so it's not actually going into a specific document so I'm going to change this and it will add a shortcut on the desktop and that way it'll look a little bit more uh, like an actual application So that's how you add uh, some Google Chrome apps and get uh, Microsoft Office Online onto the desktop. Uh, lastly, I want to show you how to update the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's really simple, but again, you need to go into the command line to do it. Uh, so the easiest way is to click on the terminal button up here in the menu bar. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is to uh, issue the command to get an updated list of packages. So to do that, you will do sudo space apt hyphen get space update and then press enter. And it's going to ask me for my password again. I must have entered it wrong. <laughs> so now what it's doing is it's going out and downloading an updated list of packages that are available for the operating system. So now that that is complete, uh, the next command that you want to issue uh, is the sudo apt git uh, dist, which stands for distribution hyphen upgrade. And this will keep your installation or Raspberry Pi as up to date as what is available in the image file that you downloaded from the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website. There may be a couple of minor things that it doesn't pick up, but for the most part, by issuing that command, you'll have the most up-to-date operating system. So for this post, that's all I have for you at this time. Uh, please stay tuned to the website for future projects that I will be posting about the Raspberry Pi. Um, in future projects, I will most likely be linking out to these uh, past two articles, the uh, article about the Raspberry Pi, and then this post um, about how to set it up so that, so that I don't have to reduplicate my efforts. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. 
Um, if you have any questions or want to submit any feedback, uh, please do so in the comments. I thank you for your time and hope you have a great day.